Uh, my name is Paul Craddock. I'm a senior cloud and DevOps architect at Round Tower Technologies. I am VCDX number 244, and that's inside the uh, data center track. Thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit about your VCDX. What led to you wanting to get the certification in the first place? Yeah, VCDX was one of those things that I, uh, as as I began my VMware career, these were the people I looked up to. I was like, man, these these people, you know, men and women, they're they're so uh, they're so good at their jobs. They know so much. I could never, I, I couldn't aspire to, you know, to to ever be part of the ranks. Um, and then, you know, as I started training and getting some low, lower level certifications, I had some key people in my life that. Uh, you know, once I passed kind of the first level, some VCPs and VCAPs are like, hey, you really should look at VCDX. And I was like, uh, I don't know, that, that seems like a lot of work. It seems like, you know, uh, these are like the really smart people. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I can do it. Uh, but uh, through, through some encouragement of some, a lot of the community, really, um, my boss in particular, uh, he said, well, I, I would love to do it. We should try to do it together and, and, and see. And uh, and that really kind of sparked the uh, the beginning. Uh, little did I know that when we opened that first Word document, it would be about 400 hours of work later that uh, you know that I would actually have accomplished that uh, that task. So yeah, it's been a, it was a journey for sure. Uh, so 244, uh, I I don't own any of those numbers. That's one from one one goes to my wife. I owe one for her. Uh, tons of support there, uh, and then the other two are for the community. Really, all the people that that uh, that help me work through that. Um, you know, I mean, I've certainly put in the hours, but uh, people doing mock defenses, people that I could say, hey, what about these pieces? People that push back on my design, people that challenged my my way of thinking, uh, and that was a huge part of a uh, huge part of it. So in what way was the community really involved? Was it through discussion boards, um, in individual conversations with people? Did you meet with people? How, what was that process like? Yeah, good question. So the community, uh, definitely, definitely a huge, huge, huge part of, uh, of my journey. So um, they came around and challenged, A, some of the ways I was thinking, B, you know, um, uh, push back and back and forth on on hey what about this and what about that and our our defense was was a joint defense and some people who are less familiar with the vcdx process might think wow so you you worked with people to do your design that doesn't seem very uh it doesn't seem very um you know real world but rarely do we as architects in in real world scenarios ever come up with a design by ourselves we're always working with different members of the team whether it's the client whether it's you know uh, whether it's you know application network you know virtualization um, all these different layers uh, come into the process so it's very much real world uh, now me as the architect I have to validate all of their all of that I have to understand all of that but you know, and that that comes into play within the defense because while we work together, we are defending one on one. So it's you against you know the panel, and I shouldn't say against, but uh, it's it's you defending why why every little thing was chosen, and we do that in in the real world as well. So um, yeah, so that so the community definitely helped me because in ways they could push back in similar ways that a client would push back and say, yeah, that's all great, but what about this piece and and why did why are we doing this again? Uh, I would really like to do this instead. And then we could talk back and forth very much the way we do day to day with our clients. How did you find that community? Uh, good question. So I found that community one through uh, well, just through through working. I, I work a lot within uh, within the VMware product set, so a lot of very similar people. Uh, VMugs for sure met a lot of people there. Um, it, volunteering to uh, volunteering at them as well. I mean, attending yes, but uh, volunteering to stand up and just speak about what you're doing on a day to day basis because uh, we're all kind of doing similar things. I think that's a little daunting for people, but getting involved in the speaker side of the community was really helpful for me. Um, Let's see. Uh, also, you know, I mean, different conferences, certainly. And then there's a huge online community as well. There's, you know, Slack channels that you can that you can be a part of. Uh, there is if you're if you're interested, uh, there, there's a and I think it's moved to Slack now when I was defending it was in it was in Google, but a uh, whole whole boards of potential people that are trying to get their VCDXs and, and just want to ask, hey, I'm doing this, what would people think? Some of the, that community are current VCDXs that just volunteer their time to be on that. Um, and others are people with VCAPs that are just working on designs, kind of wanting to go back and forth. So since you've got your VCDX, 
how has life changed? Are things different? Um, what's happening now? Yeah, uh, good question. What's happening now? So uh, things things are definitely definitely a little different. Uh, my my role has changed. So when I was working on my VCDX, I was a little bit more in the day to day kind of uh, implementation side of side of things. Uh, being that a VCDX is a design certification, I wanted to use my skill sets a little more in the architecture side. So my, my personal career path moved a little bit that way. So I moved a, a little bit more pre-sales, still kind of doing a little bit of a hybrid thing. So I still do some implementation, but for, for a little more complex projects, I'll come in on the pre-sales side, understand the pre-sale, you know, understand the requirements, where the customer's driving at, um, being able to take the business issues that are, you know, that are facing, link those to technologies that we can use to address those issues, and then build overarching frameworks, uh, architecture for those. Those, uh, begin implementation and then possibly, you know, uh, begin to step out of that as, as the implementation kind of wraps up. But uh, yeah, so my role is a little different now than it was then. Um, but a lot of the principles that we learned, that I learned and that, you know, uh, the community members I was going through with learned, uh, we learned, we use day to day in that process. What would you say was the biggest challenge in trying mm -hmm. to get your VCDX? Uh, one of probably the largest challenges is just time management. Uh, as I as I mentioned before, uh, for me personally, it was about 400 hours by the from start to finish. However, um, you, you know that that time can vary. Uh, maybe others who uh, who are a little smarter than me could do it quicker. Uh, that's just the amount of time it, it, it took me. And uh, one of the critical pieces is is if you have a family is getting some family buy in so have a chat with your spouse and uh, and make sure they're there to support support you as well. Um, my wife uh, was a huge, huge um, backer uh, of me. She gave me the nights and weekends to to just sit there. I remember uh, right before our defense, uh, I, I used the entire July 4th weekend. So July 2nd through the 5th, I was basically locked in my study. Uh, we we slept, but that was about it in the evenings. But other than that, we were we were working, finishing up our our you know last minute pieces of the design, um, last minute pieces of uh, you know of the presentation and 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 doing doing practice. So uh, a lot. So that's huge to have buy in from from at least the people around you, um, and then also from from community members or people that are with you in the journey that will that will uh, ask you about it because uh, that's really it. You're, you're hitting the same nail on the head just kind of constantly. And so you have to have someone that's going to be there to ask you, hey, how's it going? Are you, you working on that? Is it, you know, some accountability, uh, I think is pretty key. Is there anything during the process that you wish someone had told you earlier? Hmm. Um, let's see. I wish someone had told me earlier. I think people in general are really, uh, especially within the community, are very willing to engage and give you advice. And most of it's pretty good. I would say the thing that I wish I could have uh, believed more was that what they were telling me was was true, right? Uh, I think it's hard maybe to believe some of, some of it. Uh, it feels like Again, this is a massive undertaking. Uh, I'm never going to finish. Uh, and someone saying, you know, hey, you can do this. You know, just take it steps at a time. Uh, maybe it was a little tougher to believe uh, in in the beginning. Um, and it is, uh, it's a different way of thinking. So I came up, I, you know, as most of us did, we're a little more engineer minded. And I think engineers are great. I am one but we have some downsides. We get a little too into the weeds and sometimes and a little too focused on the technology. And as an architect, we have to be able to think a little higher level. We have to be able to remove ourselves from some of that and see big picture. And I think that's, um, if someone would have told me, hey, um, take the engineer hat off just a little bit sooner and think about it more from the business side, think about it more from the overarching implicant, you know, implication side. Um, I think that would have been uh, a little, that would have been helpful for me um, and everyone says this, uh, but it's true when, when you're in front of that panel defending what feels like defending your design against people that are just poking holes in it, the panel's not there to, to just, you know, to destroy your design. They're there to try to help you, uh, to help you succeed. And it maybe doesn't feel like that, but if you can believe that, then I think your, your performance during that time will be better. Uh, you maybe not feel better, but if you can believe it, you'll act a little better around that. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. So you seem like a very goal oriented person. Is there something next on the hit list? Do you have somewhere you want to go from here? 
Um, are you just happy? Are you at rock star status? <laughs> No, uh, no rock star status. I think uh, I, I think as soon as you start believing your own press, you're in danger. So uh, so no, I'm just uh, you know, and and this is recorded, and I've said this before at other conferences. So so nothing nothing new here. But after I passed my VCDX, I had to take a VCAP uh, when when because I passed in the five days. So six six came out, and I had to re up and take the the VCAP, you know, so I could upgrade my VCDX. And I failed that the first time. So I think that's um, I think that's one thing to keep in mind is uh, we're all we're all just human and yes I've passed this and, and it was it was really challenging uh, but that didn't make me instantly impervious to failure um, you will fail and that's okay it's just how do you respond to that failure that is really key uh, do you just say well I failed and I'm never gonna try again most of the VCDXs um, did had to take it had to defend two or three times before they could pass and and that's okay it's okay to fail it's not okay to fail and go ah I'm never gonna try that again they keep going. So um, for me uh, personally right now, um, and now that this is, uh, this is going out there, I might actually <laughs> have to do it. So put some pressure on myself. Uh, I'd like to try for a second VCDX uh, at some point, maybe network. We'll see. Uh, we'll see which, which track uh, I end up choosing. Um, currently, my role shifted as as a lot of us have into cl very cloud focused technologies. Um, and I think that that, um, and some people might think, well, that's, um, you know, it's a VCDX, it's VMware, it's kind of on-prem, that doesn't really, uh, that doesn't really translate, you know, we're, we're moving into cloud. I would say that's probably not a real great way to think about it because the design and architecture principles didn't change, right? We still have to address the same issues we did on-prem in the cloud world. The answers might be slightly different, but the principles didn't change. Businesses still want to be up, you know, as close to 100% as they can. They still want to address business problems. They still want to do all the things that the art that this that you know the the framework around VCDX teaches you. So I still think it's extremely valuable, if not even more now you know, within a cloud world. Um, so a lot of some cloud technologies, definitely precedent of some AWS certifications, some Azure certifications as well. Um, and so uh, you know, once I finish rounding my way. Uh, around around some of those, I'll probably come back for a second a second round of VCDX. Bold move. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, it's a good segue to ask you what your favorite VMware product is. Ooh. Favorite VMware product? I'll tell you the one I'm playing with the most right now. I don't know if it's my I don't know if it's my favorite uh, because. I think some of the sometimes we get away from the the magic of just basic VMware uh, capabilities like the ability to vMotion or live uh, upgrade machines. I was dealing with um, a client uh, in a particular hyperscaler, no na no names here, but uh, and when they moved some of their VMs to cloud, they realized, hey, I need to expand a disk, and that required a reboot of the machine, and they just thought, well, I can't, why would I why would I have to reboot to just expand a disk? That's how it works in that particular hyperscaler. And so, uh, but you don't have to do that on, in, in VMware, right? We, we can just do that. Um, the ability to move running workloads between compute nodes is actually pretty magical. Um, so anyway, that's, you know, even the basics are, are incredible, I think. Um, the one I'm playing with the most right now is NSXT though, as I'm not, uh, I know enough networking to get myself in trouble. And that is, you know, so that is a pretty deep network, obviously, and it also is is pretty cutting edge. So um, I would say that's, uh, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's certainly the one that I'm spending a lot of time on right now. What would you say is the coolest innovation you've come across recently? Ah, coolest innovation uh, with like completely uh, outside of just any technology or within the VMware space? I have answers for both. Anywhere. Okay. All right. Anywhere. Um, I tell you, I am, uh, I'm doing a lot of, a lot of lab time, a lot of playing right now with, uh, with Terraform. I think that's, uh, I, I get the infrastructure as code thing. I, by the way, and, and I've said this before, I got into infrastructure because I did not want to code. Uh, and then we decided that infrastructure should be code. And here I am, you know, sitting around coding again. So, uh, but I think Terraform is a pretty interesting technology. It's really fun to play with and they're doing, it, it works really well in the cloud world, uh, but they're doing a lot of really cool stuff even within the VMware uh, ecosystem. So they just released their VMware cloud on AWS, uh, you know, integrations uh, and, and that's, that's pretty exciting. So uh, the ability to define all of my, all of my stuff in code and then push it uh, instead of having to right click and, you know, or even write a bunch of PowerShell, it's, you know, that, that's pretty fun. 
Um, so that's one uh, just overall. I would say a second innovation that's been really fun, we're doing um, a lot within the VMware Cloud and AWS space right now. And, um, and hybrid cloud extension is, is a really cool technology. Uh, and I know it's been around for a long time, but now that it's you know something that's pushed more into the mainstream, into the public uh, world, um, being able to extend data centers into into cloud and actually you know not have to change IP addressing or, or worry about replicating and, and do some of that, it, that's a that's a pretty cool capability. That's fun. And what do you think will happen in the industry in the next five years if you look into the crystal ball? Oh, yes, the crystal ball of technology. Let's see. Uh, it's going to change uh, no, no matter what, right? Um, I think that's my favorite part of technology, actually. Um, it, well, it's my favorite part, and it's also the most challenging part. My favorite part is that I, I'm always learning. And that's also the most challenging part. Uh, this is not the industry for someone that wants to learn how to do it and then do that for, for the rest of their career. Most of the technologies I'm working in today didn't exist five years ago, and it certainly didn't exist when I was, you know, finishing out my college degree and doing and doing some of that. So, uh, so where do we go in five years? Uh, uh, that's that's a little challenging to answer. I think um, I think. I'm interested in in VMware's in a lot of the announcements VMware's been making around Tanzu and you know this container world. Seeing where that goes, you know, making that a first class citizen, I think is very interesting. Um, it will be even more interesting to see, you know, in the coming years uh, how how a how deeply that gets uh, adopted, and then if we're really going to be still managing operating systems and servers in in you know in five years. In five years, I think we probably will. In 10 or 15, I don't know. Maybe we won't be. Uh, and they certainly won't look, hopefully won't look anything like they look today. So it's a, it's a brave new world. So are you always stuck behind the keyboard or do you have other hobbies that you engage in? Uh, um, from a personal perspective, no, not always. Although I do, I do like uh, to spend to spend time behind the keyboard. Uh, but when I'm not, uh, I think uh, for as plugged in as as I am, uh, it's really nice to unplug. So for me, that looks a lot like just getting out, uh, doing some hiking, some camping, backpacking. Um, if I can find a place that has absolutely no cell phone signal, that's a really good weekend uh, for me. Uh, time tends to slow down, and so my wife and I en enjoy that a lot. Um, but you know, I have some some uh, other hobbies as well around, like you know, uh, I'm I'm a I'm a big food guy. I enjoy eating, as I think probably most people do. So uh, you know. Sm smoking uh, some meats every once in a while, uh, brewing uh, a few things. I am in Kentucky, so we, we do appreciate our, our liquor around here. So, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today and answering all of these great questions. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, anyone who's even remotely thinking, I'd like to try that. Uh, definitely do. Uh, and reach out to anyone you, you know you, you may know who is connected to that community. Uh, would love to work with work with people uh, to continue to grow the numbers. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.